Hi everyone, the name is Eric Thorne. In today's video, we're talking about the real ENFP personality type. And in this video, I'm going to show you that ENFP is not the adventurer they are often portrayed as, and rather that ENFPs are more like researchers. Now, I'm going to explain this using numbers and statistics, and I'm going to show you how ENFPs tend to test and how they tend to respond to different personality questions compared to other personality types. And in particular, I'm going to compare the ENFP to the four neighboring personality types. So if you look at this screen, basically what you will see is the cognitive function results of the ENFP personality type as opposed to the ENTP, the ENFJ, the ESFP, and the INFP. So here you can see black and white what makes the ENFP's thinking patterns so unique compared to any of the other 16 personality types. Now, you have a lot of people out there that are mistyped. You have a lot of ENFJs that think they are ENFPs. You have a lot of INFPs that think they are ENFPs. You have a lot of ENTPs that think they are ENFPs. And you have a lot of ESFPs that think they are ENFPs. So what you want to do if you want to know if you're mistyped and if you are really an ENFP is you want to learn to recognize and study all these four archetypes, all these five archetypes against each other. So True self-awareness comes not just from being able to recognize and understand yourself accurately, but also from being able to understand other personality types. So we're going to go through them in order to show why ENFPs are unique. And of course, to do that, we should always start with extroverted intuition. Now, I told you ENFPs are more researchers than they are adventurers. That means Unlike the ESFP personnel type dominated by extroverted sensing, the ENFP is an extroverted intuitive, and that means their primary aim is to figure out and connect patterns. That's what they are about. That's what they do. And that is manifested through one dominant activity, and that's the desire to learn. So if you compare, say, an ENFP to, say, an INFJ or another non-extroverted intuitive type, the main difference is an ENFP wants to know why and what. And an INFJ is okay with ignorance or with being ignorant about certain matters. So an ENFP will want to know what you did in the day, where you went, what you uh, did when you went there, when you were there. They want to know and understand things about time and patterns and connections and experiences and different activities. ENFPs are mainly predictors. So what they do is they predict the near immediate future. They predict what people are going to say. They try to anticipate in advance how a situation is going to run down. They go through scenarios. Okay, first I go grab that and then that person says this and then I say that back. And so they are constantly thinking and analyzing and processing these kind of connections. Now, Typically, an ENFP is primarily interested in the interpersonal, and that can lead them to thinking they are ENFJs. Uh, on the other hand, you have a lot of ENFJs that think they are ENFPs. But if you compare the extroverted intuition scores of an ENFJ and an ENFP, you notice there's a big difference here. Okay, sure, both of these types enjoy and value opportunities and exploration and figuring things out. But... The ENFP is the predominantly curious type, while the ENFJ is more a kind of double intuitive, meaning the ENFP, the ENFJ is somebody who has strong extroverted intuition, but also strong introverted intuition. And the ENFJ is going to not just be interested in learning about things, but they are also going to seek to come up with and conceptualize and realize their own vision. So while the ENFP is an extrovert intuitive specialist, the ENFJ is constantly thinking about my vision, my one idea that I want to realize, my one opportunity that I'm working towards. The ENFJ is the opportunity maker, the person who realizes and creates and has this big project in mind, some kind of dream or lifelong aspiration that they are working towards. 
uh, often involving the community and the group and the tribe around them. The ENFJ is trying to realize or create something for themselves and for the people around them. And so what you want to do is you want to compare the extroverted feeling scores of the ENFJ and the ENFP. I told you the ENFP is typically interpersonally oriented, meaning the ENFP is more interested in learning about people and about relationships and about experiences and values. That can sound like extroverted feeling, but the difference is ENFPs don't have dominant extroverted feeling. That means the ENFPs are typically not going to initiate relationships or build connections with other people. Where the ENFJ is somebody who wants to create and build connections with others. The ENFP is a person that wants other people to build and create connections with them. So the ENFP is somebody who often wants and needs relationships to be happy, but often a person who is shy and socially a bit anxious to meet new people and to talk to people and to be judged. The ENFP worries about um, being rejected for and here's their personal identity. The ENFP fears that people will see their and their authentic self and who they are and that people will reject them for it because ENFPs have a very strong sense of who they are. Interpersonal relationships are much more difficult because the ENFJ lacks a strong sense of self and their own needs and their own boundaries the ENFJ finds it a lot easier to let go of themselves and to yoke and laugh at their own expense and to build connections, sometimes at the expense of their own needs. So if you're a person that feels like I'm pouring myself into relationships and into other people, but getting nothing in return, that might be a sign that you're an ENFJ. Now, if we compare the ENFP to the ENTP, that's a more difficult matter because what you'll see is ENFPs and ENFPs have both very high extrovert intuition scores. By the way, that number is not accurate. That number should be a lot higher, actually. Uh, that must have been copied incorrectly, but it was somewhere closer to 65. So ENTPs and ENFPs, they are both very intuitive. ENFPs are, and this is a small thing, a very small thing, ENFPs are slightly more intuitive than ENTPs, and that's because ENFPs are slightly more subjective than ENTPs. ENTPs have a need for their observations and their ideas to be based on something objective, and that can cause them to somehow inhibit and limit some of their extroverted intuition. So you will see that ENTPs have slightly lower, tendentially, extroverted intuition than ENFPs, but it's very subtle and it's very hard to see. Both of these types are dominantly extroverted intuitive. That means they are extroverted intuitives at the expense of introverted intuition. So what you see here is a lot of time ENFPs and ENTPs take the opportunities, the many opportunities over the one possibility. ENFPs and ENTPs stay open and investigate all different patterns while INFJs and INTJs specialize and go into one this big theory that they are so sure of that they think is so correct that is based on speculation. So ENFPs and ENTPs can be differentiated by introverted feeling versus introverted thinking. So what you see here is yeah ENTPs they are introverted thinking types and ENFPs are introverted feeling types. So if you look at the statistics, what you'll see, okay, the personal identity of the ENTP is not all that important. And is sometimes, while it is recognized as something valuable, I mean, it's not that ENTPs lack a sense of self. It is that on the most days, if you're given the choice between the chance to better yourself and to fix yourself or to change something about yourself, uh, the ENTP is going to adjust themselves and compromise and make changes to fix and to change and to improve on themselves. While the ENFPs have a desire to hold on to who they are and their sense of self and their self-worth. So you see here, ENFPs look to and value their own personal identity and seek to avoid to change themselves, to uh, act differently or talk differently or look differently or change their looks or appearance to uh, fit in or to be more successful. ENTPs, they 
look at what is successful and how can I be more successful and what seems to work better and what could work differently, and what's more efficient and what's less efficient. And so ENTPs are constantly thinking, oh, that part of myself people don't like, so I just put that away there. And this I will use humor to subdue and this I will use, this method I will use here. And I know this group, they really like that kind of a person, so I'm gonna be a bit more outgoing. And so you see ENTPs, are more comfortable being chameleons or adjusting themselves or their personality and letting their personality go into the back seat while ENFPs lead with their personality. ENFPs want to be themselves and want to be themselves even if people will judge them for it. So that's the main difference there. That's how you differentiate between those two. Then you should look at the ENFP versus the ESFP. And like I said before, ENFPs are researchers, while ESFPs are adventurers. So what you already see is ESFPs are like a more confident, the more assertive version of the ENFP. A lot of time when an ENFP is talking, the ENFP is talking with certainty. This is how it is. This is how it works. This is fun. This is great. This is what I like. This is what I don't like. While ENFPs talk with more curiosity slash uncertainty. This could be what I want, or is this who I am, or is this what I like, or could I like this, or could I prefer that? The ENFP is rooted in what ifs, while the ESFP is rooted in the sense of, this is it, this is what I want, this is what I like, this is where I wanna go. So the ESFP lives their life and their identity, expressing themselves and talking and sharing and being open with themselves with less worry about, um, what if I could be happier somewhere else? Or what if I could do something differently? Or what if I could be somewhere, uh, live some other life, or have some other lifestyle, or be so, live somewhere else than where I live now? So the ESFP has a lot more sense of security in their body and in their identity and in their, inter in their experiences overall. Another thing you want to look at is... Uh, ENFPs versus INFPs. Now, a lot of time people will say the main difference between an ENFP and an INFP is just FI versus NE. So they'll say, look at the FI and look versus the NE. I often say, look at the FE and versus the NI. Because what are you, what's really interesting is INFPs are double intuitives. And I said it's about ENFJs as well. ENFJs are double intuitives, meaning they have Decent NE and decent NI. INFPs are also double intuitives, meaning they have high NE, actually not that high, that number is incorrect, uh, and high NI. So what you're going to see is INFPs out NI ENFPs. INFPs are much more rooted in speculative, uh, dreaming and fantasizing and projecting idea, an idea or a reality or a possibility, one possibility, one idea, one big vision, uh, where ENFPs are less interested in doing such a thing. ENFPs value NI and see it as something positive, but also see it as something speculative. So ENFPs want to go out and test it. If there's a theory or an idea, interesting okay let's go and test it let's go talk about it let's go discuss it has anybody else done this is there any research on this can i see any other person who said this before can i see any backup any evidence any patterns that match up with this theory or this idea infps go this is a theory or an idea and then they get lost in this space and so they are the kind of people that brainstorm or conceptualize a theory and then want to go out and test it and want to learn about it, but then also want to process it and the data and work on it and expand on it. So in that, they use both NE and NI. Most importantly, INFPs, RFI specialists and ENFPs are NE specialists. So what that means is INFPs have a dominant identity a dominant sense of self, a dominant idea of who they are, which they are very passionate about and which they will stand up for no matter what. ENFPs have a bit of a more fragile identity, an identity that is uh, important, but constantly uh, something that they are anxious about in relation to other people. What if people don't like this about me? What if people judge me for that? What if people think I look bad because of this part of myself? What if people don't appreciate this in me? So 
that's what you want to be really look at when understanding the ENFP personality type. So this is my video about the real ENFP. And if you enjoy this video, feel free to check out my content on ericthor.com slash ENFP and to become a patron at patreon.com slash ericthor. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.